Hello, and welcome to today's Arduino class. Today we're going to be talking about the Arduino IDE, or Integrated Development Environment. And basically we're going to be talking about how, you, how to program your Arduino to do what you want it to do. So, first off, this is the Arduino IDE. Um, an IDE, or an Integrated Development Environment, is basically a text editor that also allows you to run code and test your code and so test your code um, very quickly after you've written it. If I was using something like a text editor to write this code, I would have to first write the code and then load it onto the board using a separate program and switching between these two might take a little bit more time than simply writing this code and then hitting upload at the top here, which is how you upload programs to your board. So the Arduino, the, you code your Arduino using um, this program and all of these methods that you see are all based on C++. So um, in addition to using these methods over here, um, you can use C++ to do stuff like for loops and other things that you want to do in order to code your Arduino. So right here you have a, sam a sketch that I wrote a while ago. Um, you don't really have to understand what's happening here. This is just to show you what a completed sketch might look like. And also Arduino calls its programs sketches. So when I say sketch, it basically just means an Arduino program. So yeah, this is an example sketch. Um, and I'll just talk about the parts of this sketch over here. So, first off, you see all of these number, these uh, names at the top of my sketch over here. These are all variables that I'm creating. So, I'm creating an I'm creating an int called enout, and that int will be given a value of six. And I'm, I'm creating an int called done with a value of seven. And I'll talk about why I'm create why I was creating ints like this later. I also created some uh, longs, which are basically just um, numbers with decimal points that are also um, long, which is their name, which is why they got their name. Um, and next, we're we're going to talk about the first uh, function in our program, the void setup function. So the setup function is basically used in order to set up parts of your Arduino to run the code that you're going to run, to run your main code, basically. So this is where you put your code that will run once in order to set up, set up your Arduino. Your main code is usually going to be in void loop, and this runs repeatedly as long as Arduino is powered. Once you load your program onto here, as long as your Arduino is supplied with power, it doesn't even need to be your laptop. Um, it'll run this program, this setup, and then it'll keep running your loop program. So this will repeat over and over again. So if you have something like you want to read a temperature sensor and display that temperature on a screen over and over and over again, you would put the you put that part of your code into your loop. So let's look at a new, like what a new sketch looks like. So I just hit File, New and we got a new sketch over here. So as you can see, it starts out with the void setup and the void um, loop. So let's try using the setup part of our uh, sketch first. So what are things that you have to set up on your Arduino before you use them? The main thing that you're going to have to set up are your pins. So you might remember from the Arduino hardware video, um, that the Arduino has a lot of pins that have a lot of usage, have a lot of usages. So, for example, there's digital pins, there's analog pins, and then there's all of the power pins. In order to use your digital and analog pins correctly, you're going to have to set them up properly before you use them. And the way you do it is this: you can say pin mode, and I'll tab this, up, which is basically saying this is basically a function that sets a pin to either an input or an output. And it has two things that you want to put in between the parentheses. Um, 
the first thing that you're going to want to put in is the number for the pin. So for digital pins, the numbering is between is just 0 to 13. So it's just going to be a simple, like, let's say we want to set pin 5 as an output. So we just write 5 because that's what pin 5 is designated as. And then we say output in all, okay, output in all caps. And then you have to end every line with a semicolon because this is C++. So now our pin 5 is set up as an output. And that's pretty simple. I mean, we're taking the, we're setting our pin, our pins mode. We're setting pins five, pin five's mode um, to an output. So now pin five is designated as an output, which means that we can use some special methods to um, use as a voltage output. Now, if you want to make um, a digital pin an input, like let's say pin nine, we can say pin mode. 9 and say input in all caps and end the line with a semicolon and this is designating pin 9 as a digital input and last no and then this is the weird one not really weird though uh, analog pins are numbered a0 through a5 so when you do your pin mode you can't just write like 4 because it'll think you're talking about digital pin 4 you have to write a4 and generally, you're only going to be ever using these as inputs. You can use them as outputs, but it'll be a digital output. So at that point, you may as well just use a digital pin as a digital output instead of using the few analog pins you have. So now we've configured three pins. We've configured uh, pin 5 as an output, pin 9 as an input, and pin A4 as an input. So now let's see what we can do with these pins. So with outputs, you can use um, a function called digital write. And what digital write does is it basically allows you to, well, what it's trying to refer to is you're writing a digital value to your pin. That means like a one or a zero. In practice, all this means is that you're either setting your pin to a high voltage or a low voltage. And this will make more sense when I write it down. So we do digital write and then two parentheses and end with a semicolon. And then the first argument is going to be the pin you want to um, set the value for. So in this case, our only output is 5. So we just put 5 out here. And then you can either pick high or low. Now, by default, it's going to be low. So we're just going to put high here. And this would set pin 5 to be to have a value of high voltage. So it's going to be supplying 5 volts from that pin. So if you want an LED, if you want to have an LED that you're turning on and off, um, controlled by your Arduino, this is how you would do it. You would uh, wire it um, from a digital pin through a resistor in series with the LED, and then you can control. Uh, when the LED gets power. So it's really useful for stuff you want to turn on and off. Now for inputs, what you want to do in order to get a value, a digital value, is you use a function called digital read. Now because you're getting a value, you need to store that value. And remember in the other sketch, I was assigning values to um, variables. So in this case, we can just say um, Let's just say int uh, value is equal to digital read, read, and in parentheses and semicolon. And this only takes one argument, and an argument is just something you put in the semi in the semicolon. No, in the uh, parentheses. Um, and remember, our only digital input is going to be nine. So now. When this part of the code runs, um, the whatever value is at the is whatever volt. Okay. When this thing runs, the Arduino is going to check whether pin nine is getting a high or a low voltage, and if it gets a high voltage, it'll assign value with um, a value of one. And if it gets a low voltage when this runs, 
it'll it'll give value of both um, value of zero. So, I mean that's how you use digital read. Um, and then last 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 but not least, we can have an analog read. So you can say int analog is equal to analog read. And our only analog pin that we've um, set up is A4. And again, that's only one argument. And basically what this will do is it'll take the um, voltage that's being given to the pin. And basically, depending on how where it is on the number line between 0 and 5 volts, it'll assign a value to it. It'll assign a value um, between 0 and 1023. So basically, if you have 2.5 volts, it's going to be, it's going to give analog here a value of like 512. If you have 5 volts, it's going to give analog a value of 1023. If you have 0 volts, it's just going to give analog a value of 0. So that's how you use the um, analog read function. And another function that I want to talk about here is the delay function. And the delay function is um, pretty useful when you want to work with LEDs too, because right now digital write is being digital write five. Okay, pin five is being set high by digital write over here. However, it's not ever being set low. So if you want to turn off the LED, we would follow it up with digital write five low. But in but in the code, what this does is immediately after turning the pin high, it'll turn the pin low. So basically the LED will not really turn on at all. It might flash for a second, but that's it. And that's not probably not what you want. So what we can do is we can set the program to basically stop for a given amount of time. So we can do this by saying delay. And what this function does is it basically stops the program for however many milliseconds you write in between the parentheses. So if we want, and a millisecond is a one, one thousandth of a second, or rather, a second is a thousand milliseconds. So if we want to delay the program for a full second, we have to write one thousand in here. And then that's, um, and then basically what this program would do is it would set the pin to high over here and then wait for a second and then set the, set the pin to low. So if you have an LED, it'll turn the pin on, wait for a second and then turn the pin, pin off. And usually you'd also want a delay here because if you don't do that, it'll go, it would have gone, well, let me show you, it would have gone to low and then straight back to high. So it would also not work properly. The um, LED would always be on. So now if you have your program and you think it's correct, um, or if you want to check it in the middle, you can hit verify over here and it'll prompt you to save. And I'll just save into this folder for now and it'll try to compile your sketch. And if it works then you won't get any errors and you'll see that I didn't get any errors. And then once your um, sketch is compiling correctly, you can hit upload. And sometimes you get an error. Typically what this error is caused by is if the ports aren't properly Okay, and the error just went away. I guess the ports might not have been set properly for whatever reason. Now it's working. So now it's pro what's going to be happening on my um, Arduino that you probably can't see is that the output on 5 is going to be turning on for a second and then turning off for a second. And we can't see this from the Arduino right now because I don't have any LEDs to turn on. So maybe we can figure out another way to um, 
set the to like figure out what the Arduino is doing at what time. So if you want to have your Arduino print to a console, like if you've used Python or if you use Java, um, you know that you can print to your console, and this is really helpful for debugging. So in our in Arduino, there's a very similar thing too, and that's called the serial monitor. In order to start, but th that's not on by default. It's also not this uh, console down here. So what you have to do in order to get the serial monitor working is you, preferably in your setup code, you'd say serial.begin, and in parentheses and semicolon. And then in this um, argument, you'd put the baud, what's called a baud rate. And you get this by, you can go to serial monitor over here and it says 9600 baud. And so you can just put that here. And your serial, and now this will be able to print a serial monitor. And how you print a serial monitor is also pretty simple. Serial.print. And then you can say something like LED turning on. And then I can put something here saying serial.print LED turning off. And then I can upload this to my Arduino. And we can go to our serial monitor. And you can see that LED is turning on, LED is turning off. And this is really not the best formatting, but there are ways you can format your program to print properly. Um, but yeah, these are some of the basics in order to use your Arduino. If you have any questions, you can um, ask our team. But for now, I'm going to be ending the video. So see you in the next video.